Okay, so this video is all about Tesla Model 3 paint. And to a lot of people watching this, you'd wonder why on earth we'd make a whole video about paint. Well, amongst the owners groups, there's been a lot of chat recently because the cars arriving in the UK and being sold new from the 1st of March 2021 have been coming from the Tesla factory in China. Previously to that, they were coming from the factory in Fremont in California. And with that change, a lot of people were asking, is the paint better, worse, thicker, thinner, and what the differences are? So. To answer those questions, I've been going around with this, which measures coating thickness. I paint thickness on cars in this case. So in this video, we're going to compile and tell you information about three different areas, really. One, are the made in China cars uh, paint, is it thicker and is it better quality? Two, how do testers compare to other manufacturers? We've got VWs, we've got Mercedes here, we've got Audis, so we've compared paint thickness to other manufacturers as well. And then lastly, is there a difference between the different colors? Is a red multi-coat thicker than a solid black? Well, in this video, you're about to find out. So some of this conversation has been spurred by reports of some vehicles where on the Model 3s in particular, along the seals here, have been suffering from excessive stone chipping, basically, and even some pictures online where some paint has appeared to be peeling along here. Obviously, this bit is vulnerable and there is extra coating here, but it does seem to be prevalent on some cars. And we want to see if that has then been eradicated with these new China ones. Have they done some extra protection here? They're also fairly vulnerable on this section for stone chipping. And our PPF kits where we cover the paint in the clear plastic film has proven really popular just to make sure they don't pick up these stone chips. And of course, yeah, the front can suffer from stone chips like any car and uh, they're just as vulnerable as any vehicle, I guess because of the slope of the bonnet here they perhaps can be more susceptible. Now, Tesla did start supplying some mud flaps, um, which are not these ones. These ones have been fitted after market by the previous owner of this car. And that was quite a popular thing to do to protect them from exactly this problem. So the Model X and the Model S are all aluminium. And they have always been aluminium construction, but the Model 3 is a mixture of both. So the bonnet is aluminium. The wings are steel. The doors are aluminium. The seals are steel. This is steel. This is steel. And the tailgate is steel. So with that, we've set our gauge for the different body panels and still measured the thickness of all of those. So this device here measures to one thousandth of a millimeter, so microns. And what we'd expect with car paintwork is somewhere between about 80 microns up to about 140, 150, assuming the car is original paintwork. If you measure thicker than that, it would usually be if the cars had bodywork repairs. And indeed, that's how we use this device to check the vehicles that come into stock for any previous paint repairs. So it's a very accurate device, um, even if you pressure it twice in the same spot, you'll see some variances as um, you obviously get an ever so slightly different part of the paintwork. So the only way really we could uh, gain some valuable data from this is to take lots and lots of measurements and then average them out. So that's exactly what we did. We've taken lots of points and measured them from the same points multiple times on each car, averaged them out, and then compiled the data into lots of average summaries, basically. And with that, we paid extra attention to the seals here as well, because of that issue we mentioned where there's been some cars suffering some little bit of paint peel and kind of vulnerable to stone chips. So this has been a particular focal point but lots and lots of measurements have happened. I'm sure there will be people out there ready to comment below and criticize how we're doing this, but we're not professional paint measurers, but we've hopefully gathered so much data that this will average out to prove a valuable and reliable gauge, literally, <laughs> of the results. So for example, this bonnet here, 150 microns, 137. See how you do get some variances, but it's all roughly in the same area. But this one here, I know the bonnet of this car has been painted. So let's just show you how very quickly that's clear. 325 microns, 317. So it's quite clear this bonnet has been painted. So you can see it's a really good measure of how accurate this is. We can't tell from looking at this car has been painted. It's done perfectly well. It's not a bad paint job, but it has. And this soon tells us about it. 
And this car's had PPF paint protection film put over the original paintwork. And that's why the gauge is measuring over 400 microns. So certainly works. Let's start gathering up this data. So what did we measure exactly? Well, we took eight points around the bonnet and averaged them out. We've taken measurements from the front wings, but focusing on the front area here, because they're gonna be more prone to stone chips. Uh, we did take some measurements from the doors, but the main focus actually was down on these seals. So here for each seal, we took three measurements in the front section under this shut line here, under here, and then we did the same for here. And then we did the same on this rear section here, keeping the positioning as consistent as possible. And then we averaged those out for the seals because these are the bits with the extra coating. Then we've measured this area in three different places. And again, average that out. And then we also took a measurement from the boot lid here, just as an area to see how consistent they are there. Gathered all that into tables, done lots of averaging, lots of spreadsheet averages. And I think it'd be a bit boring if I go through each measurement. So what are the overall results as an average from the vehicles we've seen so far? Okay, let's start off along the seals as that's the bit a lot of people are most concerned about. So a lot of people think there's a paint protection film along here, especially on these newer cars, but I've yet to see one. We have seen quite a few made in China cars now. And when I've been collecting the car from Southampton, I've had a look at quite a lineup of cars there and they did not have paint protection film. There is a line along here, so it kind of looks like it, but that is just the extra coatings on the seals. So what do we find? Well, we took the measurements from three parts, measuring the top, middle and bottom. And we found that the middle section here was thicker than the top or the bottom here. So probably a paint pass. And obviously with the curvature of this, it's slightly thinner at the top and bottom sides. On all the Fremont cars, whether they were early or refresh cars, this seal here was averaging out at just over 300 microns, 310 to be precise. Obviously it isn't a very little bit, but not by a great deal. The rear section here was a bit thicker. So that tended to be a bit more than 300 microns and the sections here tend to be just under 300, but averaging out overall across these six measurements at nearly 310 microns. The made in China cars, do seem to be a little bit thicker along here. 340 microns was the average for them. So, and again, slightly thicker here and a similar measurement in terms of thinner, thicker, thinner. But yes, a little bit thicker on the made in China cars. And hopefully that helps with those stone chip issues people have been reporting. Bonnet and front wings, well, quite consistent and the same across all of them from the earliest 2019 in this country to the latest made in China cars. Basically between 98 and 110 microns was the average across the front. Although we did notice sort of emerging pattern, I don't know why, in that the near side wing was always quite consistently thinner than the offside wing for this country. Um, don't know why, <laughs> but from 2019, including the made in China cars we measured recently, only by a couple of microns, but it's a consistent thing. Slightly thinner, slightly thicker. Anyone can explain that? we will be happy to hear in the comments below. Okay, the boot lid. All fairly similar. Um, they usually averaged around about 110 to 115 microns on this center line here in this bit of the boot lid. Interestingly, the cars that were what we call the refresh, or the later cars from Fremont, were consistently a little bit thicker here. They were more like 115 to 116 quite consistently, whereas the earlier 2019 cars, and then the made in China cars, tended to be about 109, 108 microns on this uh, section here. So some slight variances, but we are talking microns, so not a great deal, um, but certainly no thicker on the Made in China one cars that we've seen so far. Okay, this vulnerable section here, very prone to stone chips. So this one, uh, we found that the 2019 cars, um, so pre-refresh, pre-made in China, these tended to be about 120, 110 to 120 microns as an average of three points that we were measuring here. Um, it does vary quite a lot in this section. It certainly comes thinner over here where you probably want it the thickest, to be honest. So anyway, let's take an average here. Now, when we get to the refresh cars, so they arrived in the UK in late 2020, um, they were actually a bit thinner. So we were seeing them averaging out actually one, under 100 microns. So they were averaging out usually about 97, 98, 99 microns in this section here. 
And the made in China cars I've measured so far have actually been a little bit less again. They've been between 85 and 90 in this section here. Now, that's just what we've measured so far. Um, we've measured a few, but it will be interesting to continue these measurements and see if that changes. And then of course, see if they do continue to pick up these stone chips in these areas here. I know we're certainly doing a lot of PPF paint protection film for the new cars. So people are being cautious and we'll just have to monitor this over time. Okay, so in summary, where does that see us? Well, consistently, we haven't seen that the made in China cars have thicker paint, at least. We'll talk about quality in a moment, but not thicker paint, perhaps a little bit along the seals, but actually they've been quite consistent over time. But what we've done, we have taken a couple of the made in China cars to a friend of mine who's a top end paint specialist. Now he spends his days detailing and polishing Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Porsches, all sorts of things. So let's see what his opinion is. So with this example of a made in China car, I brought it down to my friend Jake, who Hola. is a top end specialist. <laughs> there are some amazing cars around his unit. We can't even show them in videos because they're top end stuff. You're at the top of the game yeah. in terms of detailing, polishing, PPF. So this is a made in China car. You've done some polishing on other cars of yeah. ours before. Yeah. You've had this one for a few days. Yeah. I'm keen to get your opinion because you know more than <laughs> yeah, yeah. probably anybody else I know. It's, so. it's a huge improvement, I think, on the last, you know, with American paint. Um, it's less orange peel. The paint quality is better. Under here, for instance, I can't be able to say this on camera, but there was, the paint was more consistent. It's just better overall. So hopefully the cars coming from China will be as good as this one because it was nice to polish and nice to protect with the uh, PPF this time around. I think that's it. I mean, the, we've seen a few cars now yeah. from China and we're doing paint yeah, measuring yeah, yeah. and thickness <laughs> and stuff like that. So we'll yeah. have all those okay. in a video. Um, but there's no, basically, there's no notable difference. Like it's not like way thicker paint or anything, but you're just saying that it's more consistently yeah. finished yeah. and less imperfections. In yeah, the paint. less imperfections. I would say it's probably up there with BMW. Um, in the way of orange peel, because obviously in all the modern cars now, the paintwork out of the factory isn't as good as say Rolls Royce or something like that, but then you're paying yeah. a massive premium. But yeah, it was a lot better. This I think time that's around. what would be reassuring to know is it's consistently good. Yeah. We've seen a yeah. few of these yeah. now and you'll probably get some more from us yeah. shortly, yeah. but yeah. if it's consistently good, and I think what was interesting that we were saying just for camera is that yes, it's up there with yeah. the consistency of BMW, yeah. Mercedes, yeah, the yeah. German manufacturers. Yeah. So that is good to know with the previous cars from fremont factory yeah. um we did see them with those kind of little bits of imperfections what causes that is that just dirt in the paint yeah dirt in the paint out of the gun all yeah. sorts of so we had to sand those out of the previous cars this yeah. car like i said it just wasn't there so maybe yeah. the maybe the paint quality the factory where they painted it, the, the booths are better yeah. Yeah. could be that I don't, I don't know the reasons behind it but this was like i said a lot better good which is good, good. and it's just uh, interesting about those points so under here yeah. would normally be kind of really the blow through from paint in the front of the bumper yeah. but they've obviously set their paint yeah. machines up yeah. to really cover C under cover there everything better. yeah yeah a section kind of under 100%. that boot yeah. lip where it's better and also well, the so. good thing about this one rich was you said to tesla don't touch it so we yeah. take all the PDI wrap on it. <laughs> yeah, and we, I'm seeing a few, yeah. I have to say, from handover of new cars, yeah. including the one yeah, I was yeah. picking up where they, they kind of dry wiped them. So you had those swirls <laughs> in it already when yeah. it was new, but exactly. um, I managed to get one which was still covered in the dust and that's probably really Better. good if yeah. it's then coming for PPF. Then we and can stuff wash like it that, the so. two bucket right, right straight away and then machine polish the whole car before yeah. the PPF was applied. It's good so. to hear. Yeah, pleasing. So there'll be some more. Let's hope that yeah. consistency stays up with the yeah, China cars. Definitely. And to know it's right up with, with the Germans, that's pretty yeah, good, I'll isn't say it? It's, yeah, definitely. Yeah, Can't argue with that. Yeah. Thanks, Jake. Appreciate Cheers, Jake. your professional oh, oh, yeah. input. Um, <laughs> yeah. Your professional input means a lot. And like I say, Jake deals with top end detailing of cars yeah. here that we can't even show you. They're so <laughs> impressive. Um, so it's good to get your feedback. Thanks for your time. Cheers, Richard. We'll get this one out of Cheers. here now. Thank you. Cheers. So there we go. It might not be thicker, but it does seem to be more consistently better quality. And that is promising. And did you hear what you said? They are now in line with the German manufacturers and everything you'd expect, unless you go to real high-end bespoke premium products. So even saying better than a new BMW you had in there recently. So it certainly seems to be of good quality, uh, far less imperfections. We would see in the previous cars, the odd little kind of bit of dust in the paint or even sometimes little runs in the paint, but it does seem to be more consistently of better quality, even if it isn't thicker. And so the second part really, how does this Tesla paint compare to other manufacturers? Now we hear the quality is right up there now, um, but in terms of paint thickness, well, actually, 
quite similar. We've measured BMWs, well, this one's plastic, but we've measured BMWs, measured VWs, Audis, we've got some Mercedes part exchanges here. The last few weeks we've been measuring lots of cars, even the staff cars outside. So actually, in terms of paint thickness, it seems to be on par. The cars that we found were a little bit thinner. Well, we had a Peugeot E208, had slightly thinner paint on it cheaper car but they're right up there no real difference an, an Audi e-tron isn't suddenly twice the paint thickness all very very similar to be honest usually between about 95 and 135 microns quite consistently across the board for original paintwork so the quality is right up there but what about the thickness compared to other manufacturers so we're lucky we have lots of other cars here id4 vw golf there's a mercedes over there there's a mercedes over there there's a bmw there there's a kia over there and i won't bore you with all the figures but basically they're all about the same. Um, so Tesla paint isn't thinner, it isn't thicker. They're all quite consistently between about 95 microns and 135 microns across all the manufacturers that we've tested so far. So even compared to the Audi e-tron, people say the Audi paint's really good. Well, it's good, but it's no thicker, and we've tested that. So the next thing we've been measuring between the different colors, both on Model S, Model X, and Model 3s. So, is a blue thicker than a white or is a red any thicker than a black? Well, I kind of thought the multi-coat red would be thicker. Uh, maybe the pearl white was thicker than the standard black. But actually, they're all about the same. There wasn't really any difference. Now, we've measured a few and we've averaged them out. But as an overall, there isn't really a difference between the different shades and different colours you can choose from Tesla. They're all much the same. And then we've also tried comparing the Model S colours to the Model 3 of the same color and seeing there's any difference there. Well, quite consistently, the Model S seems to have the slightly thicker paint compared to a Model 3. It's the more expensive car, you'd like it to be. Um, and it does seem to be. So a red Model S does have consistently thicker paint than a red Model 3. Certainly on the cars we've tried so far, we'll keep measuring out of interest, but that does seem to be a common theme. And that carried over with the other colors as well. So blue Model S, slightly thicker on average than a blue Model 3. So there you have it, good to know. So there we have it, slightly strange video. To some people, this would have been a complete load of nonsense, but I know amongst the Tesla owners groups, the paint and fit and finish has been a really important topic. And no doubt I'll get all the comments below of what we could have done different and better, etc. But you know, this is what we've managed to find out so far with quite a good pool of testers to take samples from. So Model S, slightly thicker paint than the Model 3, but not much in it. Now, what it does seem is that Tesla have been improving the quality. I don't think the thickness needs to be any thicker because it's consistent with other manufacturers, but it's nice to see that the quality is becoming more consistent. And I think that's the key is the consistency of the finish, as you'd expect, getting better over time. So the next step we'll see this new Berlin factory, different paint shop, will that be far different? Well, we're gonna to have to wait to find out on that one. So kind of a strange video, but I hope it's been interesting to some of you at least. And we hope that you can subscribe to our Facebook page as well and our Instagram for daily stories. But for now, thanks for watching and speak to you in the next one.